so we need to administer an intelligence test if, if we want to know someone's intelligence. So the two main intelligence tests that are administered to children on an individual basis today are the Stanford Bini test and also the second one, Wechsler Scales. The first, I'm going to talk about the um, Stanford Bini test. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello everyone. Welcome back to this channel to learn about educational psychology with me, Dia Aminatun. In this video, I'm going to talk about individual variations according to several aspects. So there are actually three aspects included in individual variations here. So those are the first is intelligence, and then the second one is learning and thinking styles, and the last one is personality and temperament. However, in this video, we'll only be focusing on one aspect that is about intelligence. For the rest of the aspects, will be discussed in other videos. Before we go any further, it is better for us to know first the learning objectives of today's meeting. So in the end of this meeting, the students are expected to be able to define what intelligence is, explain how to measure intelligence, and then described the theories of multiple intelligence. Now let's move to the first topic that is about the definitions of intelligence. So what is intelligence? Intelligence is one of our most prized possessions. However, even the most intelligent people have not been able to agree on how to define and also measure the concept of intelligence. So, what does the term intelligence mean to psychologists? Some experts describe intelligence as the ability to solve problems. Others describe it as the capacity to adapt and learn from experience. There are also many people argue that intelligence includes characteristics such as creativity and also interpersonal skills. The problem with intelligence is that, unlike height, weight, and age, intelligence cannot be directly measured. We cannot peel back a person's cup and see how much intelligence he or she has. We can evaluate intelligence only indirectly by studying and also comparing the intelligence acts that people perform. The primary component of intelligence are similar to the cognitive processes of memory and also thinking. The differences in how these cognitive processes are described and how we will discuss intelligence lie in the concepts of individual differences and assessment. So individual differences are the stable, consistent ways in which people are different from one another. Individual differences in intelligence generally have been measured by intelligent tests and it will be discussed later on. Intelligent tasks designed to tell us whether a person can reason better than others who have taken the test. There are actually lots of experts divine intelligence, and of course, sometimes one definition cannot satisfy every individual. Therefore, the definition from every uh, expert complete each other. So here, there are some definitions of intelligence proposed by several experts. The first, um, I will show you um, the definitions of intelligence according to Santrox. So Santrox state, uh, intelligence is the ability to solve problems and to adapt and learn from experiences. The next uh, definition comes from Robert Sternberg. So Sternberg mentioned that intelligence involves weighing 
options carefully and acting judiciously, as well as developing strategies to improve uh, shortcomings. Sternberg also recently described intelligence as the ability to adapt to, to shape, and also to select environments. In adapting to the environments, if individuals find the environment suboptimal, they can change it to make it more suitable for their skills and also desires. And the last, uh, Vygotsky, by contrast, divined intelligence as the ability to use the tools of the culture and is constructed through the interactions with more skilled individuals. So those are several definitions of intelligence. So which one that's closer to your personal opinion about intelligence? Well, actually, because uh, intelligence is such an abstract, broad concept, then it is actually not surprising that there are different ways to define it. So that's the definitions of intelligence. Um, so now how to measure someone's intelligence? Uh, so we need to administer an intelligence test if, if we want to know someone's intelligence. So the two main intelligence tests that are administered to children on an individual basis today are the Stanford Binney test and also the second one, Wechsler Scales. The first, I'm going to talk about the um, Stanford Binney test. So Alfred Binet developed the concept of mental age or MA, um, an individual's level of mental development relative to others. In 1912, William Stern created the concept of IQ or intelligence questions, which refers to a person's mental age divided by chronological age or CA and multiplied by 100. Yeah, so that is IQ equals MA per CA multiplied by 100. If mental age is the same as chronological age, then the person's IQ is 100. If mental age is above uh, chronological age, then the person's IQ is greater than 100. For example, a nine-year-old with a mental age of eight would have an IQ of 133. If mental age is below uh, the chronological age, then the person's IQ is less than 100. For example, a nine-year-old with a mental age of five would have an IQ of 83. The Binet test have um, the Binet test has been revised many times, actually, to incorporate the advances in the understanding of intelligence and also intelligence testing. These revisions are called the Stanford Binet test. Why it is called as Stanford Binet test? Because the revisions were made at Stanford University. By administering the tests uh, to large numbers of people of different ages from different backgrounds, researchers have found that scores on a Stanford Binet test approximate a normal distribution, as you can see the figure on the screen. So it is called as a normal distribution. So normal distribution is actually symmetrical with a majority of the scores falling in the middle of the possible a range of scores and far fewer scores appearing toward the extremes of the range. The current Stanford Binet test is the fifth edition. It is administered individually to people aged 2 through adult. It includes a variety of items, some of which uh, require verbal responses, others nonverbal responses. And in this test, there are five aspects of cognitive assessed. So those are the fluid reasoning, so it is about the abstract thinking, and then knowledge or conceptual informations, 
And then quantitative re reasoning or mathematical skills. The next is visual spatial reasoning. It is understanding visual forms and spatial layouts. And the last one is working memory or recalling of new information. The two aspects of intelligence assessed by the fifth edition of the Stanford BNA are verbal intelligence and also non-verbal intelligence. A general composite score is still obtained to reflect overall intelligence. The Stanford BNA continues to be one of the most widely used tasks to assess students' intelligence until now. And then the second test of individual intelligence test is called as the Wechsler Skills. The Wechsler Skills is actually another set of tests widely used to assess students' intelligence. It was developed by a psychologist named David Wechsler. So as you can see here, uh, there are several types of uh, Wechsler Skills and it is used according to the age range of the individual. So the first is Wechsler Preschool and Primary Skill. Currently, it is in the fourth edition. It is used for um, the person or individual starting from two years, six months to seven years, three months of age. And then the second one is called as Wechsler Intelligence Skill for Children and Adolescents. Currently, it is in the fifth edition. It is used for six to 16 years old. And then the next one is Wechsler Adult Intelligence Skilled, and it is currently in the fourth edition. It can be used for the individual in the age of 16 years and above. Um, beside the individual intelligence test, there is also group intelligence test. So group intelligence tests include the large Thorndike intelligence test, and then the second one is the Autist Lennon School Ability Test, or OSAT. Group intelligence tests are more companion and also economical than individual tests, but of course, they do have their drawbacks. So it can have the advantages and also disadvantages. Um, when a test is given to a large group, uh, the examiner can establish the relationship um, and also connection with the individual. And also they can determine the student's level of anxiety and so on. In a large group testing situations, students might not understand the instruction or might be distracted by other students. So yeah, those are two types of intelligence tests. The first is individual and the second one is the group uh, intelligence test. Each of them has its own advantages and also disadvantages. The examiner can choose the type of intelligence test according to their need and also their goal of testing. After we all know about the definitions of intelligence and also how to measure intelligence, now we are going to talk about the theories of multiple intelligence. There is actually a question. Is it more appropriate to think of students' intelligence as a general ability or as a number of specific abilities? Psychologists have thought about this question since early in the 20th century and continue to debate the issue. So here, I'm going to explain you briefly two theories about multiple intelligences. The first theory is called as Sternberg Triarchic Theory, and the second one is Gardner's Eight Frames of Mind. Sternberg's Triarchic Theory. So according to Robert J. Sternberg's Triarchic Theory of Intelligence, intelligence comes in three forms. It is analytical and then also creative and also practical. An analytical intelligence involves the ability to analyze, to judge, and also to evaluate, to compare, and to contrast. While the creative intelligence consists of the ability to create, to design, to invent, 
originate and also to imagine. The last one, the practical intelligence, it focuses on the ability to use and also to apply, to implement and to put into practice. The second theory is coming from Gardner's or Howard Gardner's called Eight Frames of Mind. So Howard Gardner's accused that there are many specific types of intelligence or frames of mind. In this video, these types of intelligence will be described along with the examples of the occupations in which they are reflected as strengths. The first is called as verbal intelligence or verbal skills. It is the ability to think in words and also to use language to express meaning. The people who are having good verbal skills or verbal intelligence can be authors, can also be journalists, and they can also be speakers in the future. The second skill is called mathematical skills. It is the ability to carry out mathematical operations. They can be scientists, they can also be engineer or mathematician. And then the next intelligence in Gardner's theory is called as spatial skills. It is the ability to think three-dimensionally. They can be an architects, they can also be artists or maybe sellers in the future. The next intelligence is bodily kinesthetic. So bodily kinesthetic skills is actually the ability to manipulate objects and be physically adapt. They can um, be surgeons, craftspeople, dancers, or athletes in the future. The next is called as musical skills. Uh, so someone who has musical skill, they will have a sensitivity to pitch, to melody, to rhythm, and also to tone. Um, people who are having this kind of skill can be a composer, they can also be a musician or music therapist in the future. The next is called as intrapersonal skills. It is the ability to understand oneself and effectively direct to one's life. Um, the example of occupations of interpersonal skill is like uh, theologians and also psychologists. The next is interpersonal skills. It is the ability to understand and effectively interact with others. People with such good interpersonal skill can be a successful teacher, can also be mental health professional. And the last type of intelligence, uh, according to Gardner's, is called as naturalist skills. So it is the ability to observe patterns in nature and understand natural and human-made system. They can be farmers, they can be botanists, ecologists, or landscapers. So according to the theories of intelligence explained earlier, we know that and intelligence is not only one intellectual intelligence. However, there are many types of intelligence and every individual might have all of them or might be superior in certain skill or intelligence compared to other types of intelligence. All right, so we have discussed about what intelligence is then how to measure intelligence and also types of intelligence according to the theories of multiple intelligences. Now, we come to the conclusion. So, there are many experts divine intelligence. So shortly, intelligence is the problem-solving skills and ability to adapt and to learn from the experiences. Intelligence can be measured individually or in group. In measuring individual intelligence, Stanford Binet tasks and also the Wechsler skills can be used. While in group, Large Thorndike intelligence tasks and the Otis Lennon school ability tests can be administered. Theories of multiple intelligences consist of Sternberg-Tarkic theory and also Gardner's eight frames of mind. 
And uh, in this video, Sternberg mentioned that intelligence comes in three forms. The first is analytical, the second one creative, and the last one is practical. While Gardner mentions there are at least eight types of intelligence owned by individual. Those are verbal, mathematical, spatial, bodily kinesthetic, musical, intrapersonal, intrapersonal, and naturalist intelligence. All right, so those are about intelligence. One of the aspects of individual variations. I hope you all get more understanding about it. And there are actually um, two aspects that we will also learn. Uh, those are about the learning and thinking styles and personality and temperament as the individual variations. And those two aspects will be discussed in different videos. Therefore, see you on the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih sudah menyaksikan video pembelajaran ini. Jangan lupa like, komen, dan subscribe, serta nyalakan tanda loncengnya agar kalian tidak ketinggalan informasi update lainnya.